Welcome to the Solid KM University channel. Um, this video's topic is working areas or constraint boundaries, depending on which toolpath you're working on. So this is actually a uh, another companion video to a um, to the I'm to, to the 3D I machining or the HSM or HSR toolpath, or even the 3D milling toolpath. Any toolpath that uses working areas or constraint boundaries. Again, whichever one you're working with has a different name, but essentially they are the same thing. It is the area you'd like the toolpath, the 3D toolpath, to work within. Um, so I actually have this 3D I machining open, and if we go to working area, you'll see what I'm talking about in the bottom left corner. So this icon right here actually highlights what I'm defining when I create a working area. Uh, so currently it's set to internal, meaning that the tool will machine only what's inside of that sketch or that working area that I've defined and only reposition inside of that working area that I've defined. If I switch it to external, it still focuses the 3D milling toolpath inside of that working area, but it allows the tool to reposition outside that toolpath. So the differences here is essentially the repositioning. You're allowing the tool to leave the area that you've, that you've fenced off using this working area. Now, the distinction here is really just repositioning, but how you can actually use that is the purpose of this video. So a lot of customers, they understand external versus internal, but there's a couple of ways you can actually use internal to benefit you. So this is actually a good example here. So let me just exit out of here, erase that, exit out of here. And now we have a part here. I'm actually making this insert from bar stock. So I have my 3D stock represented there and I have uh, my insert. And then I've added some solids there that I can use to saw this off later. Now, the working area I've defined here is really to show the area that I'd like to work within. So again, I'm using a 3D I machining. I want it to focus inside of this working area. And I want it to understand that it can go outside the part. It can actually reposition anywhere in this space here, but I don't want it to collide with my bar stock wall there, or let's assume that this is sitting in some sort of fixture that is flush with that face. So it cannot cross that line or else it will collide with something. That is the purpose of, of the working area. I want it to not cross that line. The reason I've made these lines so far out is because I want this to work kind of like an external working area, but with, st with still the control over not crossing those lines. So let me just actually bring up this toolpath and you'll see what I mean. So it operates as if it's an external working area. It actually can cross, the, it can uh, leave the part, reposition outside the part, machine this whole thing out, but you'll notice that it does not actually cross that line there. So I've actually created an internal working area but it sort of acts like an external when you see it machine. It'll actually come so close to that line, but not cross that line. Let's get a better view of that. So again, I'll just start from the beginning. So I'll step through this code and it's positioned outside the part but because it's still within that working area I defined, it technically is still internal to the working area, except for when it gets close to this line, you'll see that the, the, the diameter of the tool stays within the line there. So this is an internal area, an internal working area, that I've kind of made it work like an external one. So that's a little bit of a tip and trick kind of thing with the working areas. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube, YouTube channel especially things like the uh, 3D toolpaths, where this is a good uh, tip and trick for any kind of 3D milling, 3D I machining, HSR, HSM toolpath. Thanks for watching.